and hello everyone. So of course my topic will be a bit different from the previous ones because the idea is to, uh, to discuss on the possibility of uh, one local probe technique to be uh, applied in solid state physics. So uh, for the last uh, 30 years, we discussed a lot about nanostructures. So, uh, and especially, what about the applications? And of course, a lot of applications are expected from nanoparticles, nanostructured powders, nano layers, and so on. So, uh, the main point is to check what about the different preparation routes? What about the reproductibility of uh, these nanostructures? What about aging? What about the stability? And what about the physical properties because uh, of the interest on the evolution of uh, physical properties? So there is many questions. And uh, the idea is to, to, to try to have a look and to help to have a better understanding on the chemical, structural, physical properties by the use of many techniques, many, techni many techniques. So one of them is uh, uh, iron uh, 57, Mosbauer spectrometry, uh, which is a local probe technique, which can be used. And I will show you that it can be used successfully to study uh, essentially, of course, iron containing nanostructures. And this has been, uh, has been possible in uh, my laboratory because we have uh, very good instrumental facilities, as you will see in the next. So I will not give a lecture on Mosbawa. What I want to show you is uh, a few uh, points which are very important. Nuclear resonance technique. There is three main hyperfine interactions. And the first one is very exciting for chemists because it, it is given uh, from the electric monopole interaction. It gives you the isomershift. On the isomershift, is an excellent parameter to characterize the oxidation state, spin state, and so on. So, of course, to distinguish, for example, between the metallic iron, iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus, and so on. A second one is the electric polypole interaction about uh, the uh, symmetry of the neighborhood of the uh, nucleus uh, iron 57. And finally, due to the Zeeman uh, effect, the magnetic dipole interaction you can have an idea about the local magnetic moment of iron and what about its influence uh, with its neighbors. Only of iron, contrary to magnetic measurements, which give an idea about the magnetism, the collective magnetism of all uh, magnetic moments. So now in the case of uh, nanosystems, there is a lot of, uh, there are many uh, locks especially related to the uh, size and distribution of size. What about the chemical nature? Is it homogeneous? So of course, the morphology or morphologies. Uh, what about the uh, structure? Uh, do, do we have nanoparticles on, on the uh, left side? Or do we have some uh, nanostructure system as it can be seen on the, the right side? So that means you have either surfaces, interfaces, ground boundaries. So what about the physics and the chemistry of surfaces? And of course, you can also uh, um, add some molecules. You can functionalize them. And what about the interaction between molecules and nanoparticles? So uh, we will. I will give you a few examples because I have uh, not a long time. So uh, two examples, a few examples. So the uh, first one will be will be uh, uh, from uh, Asmil nanostructured powders. So uh, the idea of this technique is a very simple technique, but there is many uh, problems due to the uh, reproducibility. So it depends, of course, on the what about the energy, what about the time, what about the nature of vial and balls and so on. And after uh, the characterization, and uh, usually you have a nanostructured powder. That means you have a condensation of uh, ultra-fine grains uh, each other thanks to grain boundaries. And of course, it depends on the density. So I will start uh, with uh, an example, which is uh, rather uh, pedagogical uh, with FF3, because this uh, simple chemical system exhibits 
free crystalline thesis on some amorphous varieties. So uh, we will see that uh, the, the different crystalline phases are quite different, as you can see there. So there is area of structure, you have uh, hexagonal tungsten bronze structure, and you have pyroplot. So the, the, the structures consist of uh, octahedral units linked each other through corners. The magnetism is totally different. You have antiferromagnetic interaction, but you have also frustration. That explains that you have a, a strong change of Tn from uh, 363K down to 20K for the more frustrated structure. In addition, it was possible to uh, obtain some uh, amorphous structures, which also are based on octahedral units, but randomly distributed. And uh, we have also, uh, for this amorphous phase, the freezing temperature, it's, uh, it's about 29 Kelvin. And we decided to, to ball mill the air FAF3. So we obtained uh, some powders and it was a long time to use uh, many techniques. And finally, the combination of X-ray uh, diffraction of NMR applied to gallium, which is equivalent to iron uh, as the uh, ionic radius. And of course, uh, the use of Mosbawa is very, is very easy. Uh, Mosbawa out of field on, uh, as well as in presence of external magnetic field. And finally, it was possible to describe such uh, powders by means of three different phases, essentially two phases, uh, grains on uh, grain boundaries. And it was also possible to uh, identify and to discriminate the layer in between the grain and the grain boundaries, because of course, it depends on the sens sensitivity of the technique. x ready for x ready fraction this uh, green layer belongs to the um, grain, since for NMR and the Mosbawa, local probe techniques, they are not belonging to the crystalline grain. So finally, uh, it was possible to better understand the magnetism because it was possible to follow the hyperfine field of the uh, grains on the grain boundaries and to compare them with those of uh, the bulk FF3 and the amorphous FF3. And after it was possible to uh, better understand the magnetism uh, according to the uh, size of the grain boundaries, especially the thickness, uh, allowing or not allowing the uh, polarization and also the interaction between grains. So finally, we could obtain some uh, super parametric behavior uh, once the um, grain boundaries were rather thick. It was poss also possible to do some uh, computer modeling as it was discussed uh, before in previous uh, lectures. So you, you, we started with two crystalline blocks and after we made a, a chalk. And finally, we were able to uh, simulate what about the structure, which is typically uh, the same as we have found from uh, experiments. And uh, in addition, if we put some, uh, uh, some magnetic moments, it was possible to establish a possibility to identify a spheromagnetic behavior in the grain boundaries as it was observed in the case of the amorphous phase at the uh, beginning of 80s. So now we, I, wish, uh, I, I will go to um, nanoparticles and especially some nanoparticles based on iron oxide. So probably you know that it exists uh, four main different uh, phases resulting from uh, FeO except hydroxides. So you have magnetite, which is a mixed uh, uh, valent uh, iron system. You have magemite, you have hematite, and also the uh, epsilon phase. And of course, the physical and essentially magnetic properties are totally different. So uh, it was a question which has been debat debated in the 90s, and uh, we, uh, we proposed a solution in the, in the beginning of, uh, let's, uh, let's say, about 15 years ago. So if we look carefully, the so spectrum of a typical uh, magnetite, I would say a microcrystalline magnetite, we have such a structure. At the opposite, when you have some nanoparticles, it, it, uh, we can see that the position of lines are identical, but the intensities are totally different. And this is due to the evolution of isomer shift. Isomer shift, as I mentioned, it is, character is, a, a character a, it is characteristic of the uh, iron uh, valence states. And of course, we have a deviation from iron two to iron three. That means we are, we are provoking some oxidation. 
because of course, the lower, the smaller the nanoparticle, the larger the surface. And finally, the higher the um, effect of uh, oxidation. And finally, by means of uh, a few spectra obtained uh, naively at room temperature, it is possible to estimate what about the fraction of magnetite and magemite, of course, assuming that magnetite is embedded in a layer of magemite. And typically, we have a thickness of two or three nanometers. That means if you have a nanoparticle of 100 nanometers, it is impossible to detect the presence of magemite. Nevertheless, it exists. On the contrary, if you have a very small nanoparticle, finally, it is exclusively, uh, it, it results exclusively uh, of uh, magemite. So uh, about the homogeneity, uh, it was a nice example. So uh, we were working on the cobalt ferrite produced by two different labs, by two different routes. The, the difference was the chemical route, the, sorry, by, two, by two, two, two different routes. The main, um, the morphology was the same, the size was the same. But looking to some uh, X-ray, uh, transmission electron microscopy, mass power measurements, the results were totally similar, except in field mass power, spectra, as you can see here, according to the shape of lines and the intensity of uh, inner lines. So uh, it was a rather long time to fit uh, such spectra to have a physical model. But the main conclusion was that finally, in one case, on the left side, the nanoparticles were chemically homogeneous. At the opposite, on the right side, the nanoparticles were not homogeneous. We had a gradient, a chemical gradient of iron and cobalt. An uh, cobalt was exceeding at the center. On conclusion, uh, iron was exceeding at the surface. So that means it's possible to detect uh, some uh, non-homogeneity in the chemical distribution of, uh, for example, in this case, cobalt and iron in nanoparticles of a few nanometers. Another point is if we are working with uh, nanoparticles of different sizes, as you can see here, they, are, they were not interacting because they were rather uh, distant each other. And it was possible to detect some differences, as you can see there. And such a difference is due to the, uh, to the uh, magnetic moment orientation of iron to some canting. And with a small model, a uh, core shell model, Again, but from uh, in this point, from a magnetic point of view, to have a, a core with a very well oriented uh, structure and at the surface, because of the symmetry breaking, we have some uh, disorder from the magnetic point of view. We had a kind of random structure. And it was possible to estimate such a layer at about two atomic layers, two atomic moments equivalent to 0 0.7 nanometers. Of course, it is also dependent on the uh, chemical procedure uh, to obtain such nanoparticles. But most of results are uh, reaching 0.7 nanometers, two layers. In addition, it, it is also possible when you are working very carefully in presence of external magnetic field, as you can see there, are some nanoparticles of a mixture of magnemite and magnetite. Uh, which, which were functionalized with carboxylate and phosphonate, so 2C two, two and 2P. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can see some small differences in the hyperfine uh, structure, and this difference can be explained by the nature of the chemical bond, how the, um, the carboxylate are attached to the nanoparticle as well as phosphonate. In one case, we had ionic uh, bonding, while in the other case, we have covalent bonding. As we can, we can uh, uh, add that it is very important, for example, for some medical application to know what about the chemical bond of the molecule over some uh, substrate as a nanoparticle. So in this case, uh, we can compare the different uh, spectra Mosbawa spectra obtained on the nanoparticles grafted with dopamine. And I will not discuss along about the hyperfine structure, but what we can see that uh, there is some results with the appearance of a third component. 
And this third component is uh, typical of uh, uh, the attachment of some uh, of the dopamine because we, we, we are modifying what about the surrounding of octahedral and tetrahedral units. And in addition, we made some ab initial calculations and uh, we have seen also some similarity on the results. And we have grafting through two oxygen atoms with octahedral iron units as it was experimentally observed. And we have also the, the p donor character of the ligand, uh, covalent bond, which is in agreement with the reduction of uh, iron 3 plus into iron 2 plus because of grafting. So uh, those ab initio calculations were perfectly in agreement with hyperfine data. So in the present case, the idea was to um, analyze uh, the, uh, some nanoparticles which were uh, recovered by some uh, molecules uh, containing some cobalt atoms. The idea was to enhance the magnetic anisotropy. And of course, by combining a lot of techniques, so magnetic measurements, XMCD, hysteresis loops, and of course, uh, Mosbawa spectroscopy. In the present case, we were using only serophile Mosbawa spectroscopy. It was enough to conclude that, of course, the magnetic anisotropy was enhanced uh, thanks to this uh, molecule uh, containing uh, uh, cobalt moments at the surface. So now we, were, we wanted also to, uh, to see the effect of the surface by using nanoparticles who are limited to the surface. By using some low nano, magnetic nanoparticles, the surface is twice compared to that of full nanoparticles. And of course, when you have some hollow nanoparticles with, I would say, uh, significant thickness uh, beyond two, three nanometers, so the uh, magnetic properties on essentially the Mosbawa spectra are rather similar to those obtained on the full nanoparticles. On the opposite, uh, when uh, the uh, thickness is quite small, it is possible to observe uh, some different uh, magnetic spectra, uh, Mosbawa spectra. And uh, in addition, it was difficult to fit them alone but we have applied external magnetic field, which was uh, definitive for the interpretation. Of course, it was uh, possible to discuss about the content of uh, tetra on octahedral units from the zero field spectra. But in the case of the in field tetra, we were, we were able to rather well model the hyperfine structure by means of two spheromagnetic components. Of course, magnemite is a ferry magnet. And we can assume that uh, because we have a rather thin layer, so uh, all magnetic moments belong rather to the surface. And if they belong to the surface, they are counted. And finally, we have a distribution of the two uh, iron magnetic moments, those of acta and those of uh, tetra. And as typically observed for uh, spheromagnetic behavior. In addition, uh, the two um, spheromagnetic components are anti ferromagnetic coupled, of course, in agreement with uh, what we can expect for a ferromagnetic structure. From the isomer shift, it was possible to identify each one of the two components. And in addition, it was also possible to observe that the octahedral component was uh, much larger than that expected in the case of magimite. Why? We have octa tetra, something about 2080. So that means that probably we have uh, many closing units at the surface uh, due to uh, the presence of uh, exceeding presence of uh, octahedral units. On this, it is a bit funny for us because those results uh, are rather, rather recent, uh, four years ago. And uh, such question was for us uh, since uh, 20 years ago. And now we have a, a real demonstration, real argument that uh, octahedral units are, close, uh, are uh, typical of closing units for nanoparticles, and this, in this case of magimite. So uh, what we have done also is to do some uh, modelization, modeling of the magnetic structure. So it was possible to compare with uh, the magnetic behavior we observe in the case of full nanoparticles, 
And of course, in this case, it was different because we were using two different anisotropy, a volumetric anisotropy on a superficial anisotropy, resulting from the uh, symmetry breaking. And of course, the idea was to see the competition between both of this anisotropy in addition to the magnetic interaction. And in the case of hollow nanoparticles, because the surface is twice, so we can see that it's easier to obtain some kind of content structure. In addition, if we look carefully, according to the thickness of this layer, we can see that we have a disorder of magnetic moments very close to the surface, which is very consistent with that of um, uh, the two uh, spheromagnetic components. In addition, we combine some uh, computer, the, some molecular dynamics with uh, DFT, with Monte Carlo approach, and it was possible to model at the atomic scale what about the hollow nanostructure as well as uh, the uh, magnetic structure. So the main point here is if we um, uh, observe, if we uh, look carefully, what about the distribution of tetrahedral and octahedral units uh, in, the, uh, in the structure, we can see that uh, the octal units are exceeding that uh, expected value uh, at the surface, so consistent also with experimental results. So what we have done also recently is to uh, work on the nanoparticles with different morphologies, spheres, cubes, uh, platelets, and stars. And uh, I, uh, I will not discuss all mass barber spectra, but uh, by doing some, uh, mass, by recording some mass barber spectra. And when we fit them, the spectra obtained at different temperatures, as well as at, uh, in the presence of external magnetic field, it is possible to uh, discriminate between two growth processes. That one which consists to have a starting magnetic nucleus, which will be uh, oxidized on a growth of this, or at the opposite, some magnetite growth, uh, some magnetite nucleus, which grows on after which will be oxidized. And of course, uh, rising to different morphologies. <clears throat> so uh, some conclusions, uh, there is, I would say different conclusions. The first one, because I did not discuss a lot on the Mosbawa technique. So uh, very useful because it is a non-invasive and non-destructive local probe technique. It is very useful in chemistry, physics, biology, and so on, uh, uh, according to uh, the, this line. Also in Earth, on Mars science, to identify the different minerals. We need a very small quantity of samples, the best to have powders, but it could be possible to apply on thin fins, multi-layers, frozen solutions. Sometimes it's possible to, uh, to dope with iron 57. We can control the atmosphere and we can play also by doing experiments uh, with, for example, a corrosive uh, agent by aging with temperature and so on. We can do some in situ and inoperandum experiments, for example, some charge on discharge. Uh, there is, it's, it, it requires a lot of facilities, temperature, furnace, cryo-furnace, cryomagnetic uh, system, in order to extend the number of spectra, because a single spectrum is rather frustrating. So of this, of course, if you have to combine with other techniques, uh, XRD, EXAPS, and so on, as mentioned there. Also to use, as it was uh, demonstrated in previous talks, to use a lot of uh, computer techniques, ab initio, DFT, Monte Carlo, uh, molecular dynamics, and so on. And of course, there is also some perspectives uh, to use uh, synchrotron for doing mass power spectroscopy. And uh, this, to demonstrate that it's possible to have some atomic scale modeling of nanostructures on magnetic nanostructures, providing some crucial information on chemistry, on structure, on physical properties, and of course, physical properties, essentially magnetic properties. And of course, now by such a knowledge, it is possible to apply uh, the technique 
uh, to very complex systems in material sciences, for example, to uh, with MOF metal organic frameworks uh, um, functionalized with nanoparticles or uh, nanoparticles functionalized with MOF. In soil sciences, the main difference is that the laboratory is not the same. So it's difficult to have a good knowledge about the condition of the preparation of the sample in the case of soils. But by the knowledge we have obtained there, we can do uh, some um, proposition on some uh, soils, on the, the nature of the different contents, about, uh, about medicine, agriculture, and also cultural heritage, for example, about uh, some paintings. So uh, it also demonstrates that uh, it is very important to have high quality of samples with good reproducibility to have possibility to uh, repeat. So that means uh, I, have, uh, I, I was rather successful because I have collaborated with excellent chemists and we were doing a lot of discussion about uh, what it is good, what it is no good and so on to improve both the, our knowledge and, of, uh, and after also the uh, preparation techniques. So of course, it is necessary to have a detailed structure and magnetic characterization, as I mentioned before, and to, to work on the fitting models. So for, the, for those, I want to acknowledge a lot of colleagues. So uh, especially chemi chemists, we were in red, and uh, in blue, the, the different PhD students I have supervised, and some colleagues from uh, computer modeling, uh, their names are in green. And also I thank uh, for some fundings at France on the, at different levels. And I, will also, I want also to thank you for your attention on the, with some pictures of the city where I am coming from. <clears throat> thank you all for your attention. <clears throat>